So those two really is quite straightforward. So instead of going through it page by page, showing you what each of them does, uh, which you can do in your spare time, I thought that I'll show you my favorite bits instead. So I have a few bills here. I've recorded information about them with Toaster. Um, the latest ones are for the main upgrade. So I'm just going to select one of them. Um, one of the things I really like in Toaster is how easy it is to see uh, dependency information. In the case of packages, for example, you just need to click in this little button in here and that will give you a list of the dependencies for a certain package. It's the same with the reverse dependencies, as you can see. Um, of course, each of these things is a link that will give you more information about a certain package. For example, these are the runtime dependencies for VisiBox. And I can also see which files were produced by VisiBox and installed in the root file system. Um, what's more, I can select one of these files and Toaster will show me where the file is located in the directory structure of the image. There is some interesting things happening in the configuration page as well. Um, you have a list of bit big variables that you can search because it's quite long. So um, let's pretend we are interested in machine features here. So I can search for this variable. And when I get a list, I can um, click on the variable and I will get not only the value, but also a list of the files that touch that variable with the operation that each of the files performed on it and the line number, which I think is quite useful. Um, you can also select a specific types of configurations. So for example, if you're only interested in looking at uh, variables that have been set in your local configuration, which means on your local.conf and bblayers.com files, you can select this option here. And when you click apply, you're gonna get a list of the, in this case, 18 variables that were set in your local configuration. There they are. Some quite good stuff is happening in the tasks information, I think. Here is very, very easy to see which tasks um, are reusing as state objects. We have called them cache tasks, and in this um, build, there are nine of them. So I can just select this option here and click apply, and I will get a list of those nine tasks that were used as state objects. Uh, what's more, I can also see um, which tasks tried to use as state objects but couldn't because they didn't file the right files in my mirrors. So I can select this option here and I will see a list of the 501 tasks that try to use as a state objects but didn't because they didn't find the right file. Um, here you can see how we are trying for these tasks to bring in um, the file that was searched for and, the, and where it was searched for but um, that's not coming in yet so there is still a little bit of work to be done before the release. I can also select a certain recipe and I'll get a list of all the tasks that were um, run for the recipe during the build. So very quickly I can see that most of the tasks for this recipe executed, um, that five of them try to reuse the state objects and that one of them, do will did not execute because it's empty and an empty task is one task that has the no exec flag set to one. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. it. There is only one little bit that um, I think is my favorite bit. Um, you can see it here in the list of packages installed. Um, in this list, Toaster will tell you if a package has been renamed uh, package in time. So for example, eglibc, when it was built, it was called eglibc, but when it was installed, it, it was installed as libc6. And this is probably a really small detail, but for me, it's a great example of how hard Toaster is working to try and, get, and make your life a little bit easier. Um, and that's it, I think. Um, maybe if you try Toaster, you might care to tell us what are your favorite bits.